If you checked out my previous unboxing and review of the Ellis Coco 2024 edition Sabre, I gave you a sneak peek of something that is completely unique and has a really cool crossguard design. Looks more like King Arthur's sword. King of the who? The Britons. Who the Britons? Well, we all are. We are all Britons. And I am your king. Not quite that King Arthur. But hey, I love that movie, so I'm not knocking it. This is the Crusader by H.L. Saber. Let's go. Hello to all my Jedi and Sith companions. I am your host, The Frugal Jedi, and today. I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing this Crusader by HL Saber. You can get it in two configurations. You can get base lit RGB, that'll have 18 sound fonts. You'll have sensitive smooth swing, blaster, flash on clash, lock up, infinite color changing. And you can get it on Timu. Now, if you're going to go to Timu and use the link in the description, you have to make sure that your country is set to US. If it's not, the product won't show up. The price on Timu for the RGB version is just over 107 US dollars with free shipping. If you want the H Pixel, the NeoPixel version, which is the one we're going to be looking at, you'll head over to HL Saber's official store on Alibaba. Again, I'll put a link in the description. And the price is a little higher at 115 US with shipping. The NeoPixel model will have 28 sound fonts. Plus you're going to have tip drag, melt, all the same functions as the RGB, Bluetooth control, which is really nice, and you can program it. You can add your own ignition effects, your own blade styles, much the same way you can do with SN Pixel. It comes in this really nice travel case that has a handle, and it opens with a magnetic flap right there. So I'm going to just adjust the camera, point it down, and I'll show you what it comes with. Attaching the blade on this saber is a little different than what you're normally used to. Normally, you take the blade, you push it down, and you tighten it. This one has a design where the blade has a metal ring on it. So this is going to keep it in place, which is really nice. You never have to worry about the blade coming out or flying away from the saber if you're spinning it. First thing is we're going to unscrew this top section here. Then we're going to also take off this piece. Now you take that piece and slide it down like so. And you can see it, you can hear it making contact right there. Then you screw that back on. Like so. Take your cross guard section, slide it down, and lastly, this piece. And again, slide it down, like so, and tighten it up. You can decide how you want to orient the cross guard. I'm going to have it uh, in line with the button, so it's going to be just like that. There you go. Now one last step, which I recommend, because right now the blade can swivel around, but it can never come out. There are two screws on the back, and I'm gonna tighten them up. There, that guy there. And now that'll prevent the blade from spinning around. Keeps it nice and still.
really nice design. That is something so unique. And I feel that this is going to be a really big seller. I like the size of it for one. This is definitely made for two hands. You can also use it one handed. Cool shape for the pommel. Really gives it that crusader look like a knight. You have this little ring on the bottom. Now I don't know if I'm a fan of it because it does wiggle around. But you can take it off if you don't like it. And the cross guard section looks really cool. Nice long blade. Well constructed. No rattling inside. So yeah, very nice. These sabers work a little differently than TXQ and LGT. You don't so much hold the button down as you do taps. So if I tap it two times in standby, that'll start background music. And again, stops it. If I do it again, it'll play the next track and so forth. Tapping it three times, that'll adjust volume. So you have high, medium, low, and mute. Although mute is only done when the saber is active. Tapping it six times will put it back into deep sleep. Power off. And I have it saying power off and now the light's off. I need a weapon! I need a weapon! To change sound fonts, that's really the only time you hold down the button. And what's cool is, it'll go through the list in one direction if the blade is pointing upward. If you have the blade pointing downward, it'll go the other direction. So we'll go one more time. And then back to the dark saber. Now to set all your blade styles and your ignition styles, that's where HPixel is really app dependent. You have to use the Lightsaber Pro app to be able to modify all that. You can't set blade styles and ignition styles on the Saber itself. You can select your blade colors. Very easy, you hold the button down and twist your wrist. Just a quarter turns and it'll go through the colors. And you have gesture control so you can turn the Saber on by twisting, stabbing, spinning, and you can shut it off as well by doing a pull back. I don't know if I'll be able to do it. Yeah, look at that, I did. Blaster blocks, of course. You have your lock up. Tip drag, same thing, hold the button, but have it pointing downward. You have a stab effect. But you don't have melt. That's one thing HPixel doesn't have. Tapping the button twice will cycle to the next sound font while the saber's on. I find that it doesn't work too well. Sometimes it works fine, sometimes it doesn't. So we'll try it. Yeah, it doesn't usually work while the saber's on. If I tap the button three times fast, mute on. that'll mute the saber and mute unmute. On. If I want to put the saber back into deep sleep, I can tap the button six times fast and it'll cut the power. And you can hear I have the background music playing while the saber is on. And I just tap the button four times. Now the sound quality could be a lot better and I brought it up with them. They are offering the upgrade of a bass speaker. You just have to send them a message. So if you place an order, send them a message as well saying uh, the Frugal Jedi says that you are um, doing a bass speaker upgrade. 
I'm gonna be changing mine myself to a bass speaker because it does sound a lot better than the one that's built in that it comes with. To charge it, very simple. Unscrew the bottom section of the hilt and you'll see USB-C charging port on the bottom. There you have your micro SD card, which you can add more sound fonts and more music, and of course your rechargeable battery. Now you know what the Crusader is capable of. I'm gonna demonstrate it. I'm gonna have another duel with the Padawan, and I'm gonna give you a different sneak peek of a Saber coming up for review. And then of course, join me back at the table for my final thoughts. Time for my final thoughts. The Crew Saber by HL Saber. We'll start with value for money. You're getting a really gorgeous looking hilt with a 92 centimeter pixel blade if you choose the H pixel option. You have 28 sound fonts. You can program this thing and you can create all sorts of cool effects. So you are getting a lot of lightsaber for a very little amount of money. So value for money is fantastic. You're also getting the display stand included with the Pixel model. You get the improved screwdriver as well, which is much easier to hold than the little dinky Allen key. So tremendous value. Design wise, the design speaks for itself. It looks so nice and I love that cross guard. This is the only saber in my collection that has a look like this. The pommel looks fantastic, easy to hold, uh, well designed. I also like the fact that the blade is set inside so you don't have to ever worry about that blade coming out. You can duel and duel and duel, it'll never come loose ever. So fantastic design. They did such a good job with this. Features wise, you do have 28 sound fonts the micro SD card, the Bluetooth feature, blaster flash on clash, lock up, uh, tip drag. The only thing you don't have is melt, which is okay. I wish they could add it in. Maybe they can do it later with a firmware update. That would be really nice, but it has tons of cool stuff. I love programming these types of sabers because you can create some really cool looking blade effects and ignition styles. I mean, it's limitless what you can do. Quality, the box is really nice, all foam padded. The metal's really well done. The blade, fantastic. What I listen for is to hear if I can hear that foam tube inside moving around, and you don't. What you do hear though is that little ring on the bottom moving around. I wish there was a way that that could be tighter so it didn't do that, but uh, like I said earlier, you can take the pommel off, use a flathead screwdriver, and just remove this brass piece if you don't like it. Quality of the speaker, though, is horrible. And I'm not going to be nice about it. Like, it's really bad. They can do a lot better with the speaker. The bass speaker is so much better sounding than these speakers. Now, I understand there's going to be a cost difference uh, putting a little better speaker, but the cost isn't crazy. I mean, I, I've seen the prices of speakers out there and it's not like it's a huge difference in price to put a bass speaker in there. So I highly recommend that if you do order one of these, ask them for the bass speaker upgrade. 
Hey, Padawan, what do you think of it? I do recommend it because of its uniqueness, because of the HPixel soundboard and its capabilities. It's so nice. You will love it. And this is definitely staying in my collection. I'm gonna put it on display somewhere. And yeah, this is a, a showy piece. Well, that'll do it for this unboxing and review. If you enjoyed it and you found it helpful, please give this video a like. Liking a video helps YouTube adjust the algorithm so it can recommend this video to others. Subscribe to my channel so you can see more unboxings and reviews, and tapping on that bell will allow you to get notifications anytime I release new content. If you do have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section. I'll answer you as quickly as I can. Until next time, I have been your host, The Frugal Jedi. May the Force be with you.